Bikini waxing strips, do they work or are they a rip-off? It's the show with PJ Thumb. In the last episode, I talked about the PAP's tight social control and two factors which enable this. First, that Singapore is governed by laws and institutions that enable the government to intervene into the most intimate aspects of our private lives. And second, the government actively sends the message that criticizing or opposing the government will lead to retribution, creating an environment of fear. Today, I'm going to explain another important factor in the PAP government's tight social control, which is that Singapore's laws are very broadly written to effectively criminalise all behaviour while giving politicians discretion to selectively charge their opponents. This then constrains all political activities. So activities that would be normal in other Asian countries like demonstrations, protests, marches, strikes, they are all illegal in Singapore unless you have a permit. This means the PAP government can say that political activity isn't actually illegal. You just need to apply for a permit. But can you actually get a permit? Time and time again, the answer is hell no. But on top of that, discretion on whether to take action or prosecute people is placed in the hands of senior political or civil service officials, such as a minister or the attorney general. The Attorney General, by the way, used to be the Prime Minister's personal lawyer. His appointment is controversial because of his age. While Attorney Generals are supposed to retire by the age of 60, he was appointed at the age of 62, older than the outgoing Attorney General. And it's his office which gets to decide whether to prosecute people. So let's look at some examples of things which are illegal without a permit in Singapore. First, Skyping a foreigner in to speak at a public event is illegal without permit. Jolovan Wam was convicted of this as illegal assembly under the Public Order Act when Joshua Wong of the Hong Kong Democracy Movement Skyped into a closed door event in November 2016. Ridiculous, you say. Foreigners Skype into public meetings in Singapore all the time. Conferences, businesses, churches. Well, yes the AGC doesn't have to charge you. They have discretion over who they prosecute. I'm sure the fact that they only prosecute people who disagree with the government is just coincidence, isn't it? Second, walking to parliament and standing outside it on the public pavement holding a mirror is illegal without a permit. Silan Palais did this as part of an art performance. This was an illegal procession under the Public Order Act. He was convicted and spent about two weeks in prison. Effectively, under the Public Order Act, pretty much all political activity in public is illegal. You could simply run down the road wearing an anti-death penalty t-shirt, and that might attract police attention. What's that you say? Don't be crazy. Police aren't going to call you up for running down the street in an anti-death penalty t-shirt? Well, funny you should say that. Okay, okay, what if you just stand silently in public holding a piece of paper? What if you just hold up a sign or put up a temporary sign and leave it? No damage done, right? Should be okay? No. The Vandalism Act was amended in 1968 to criminalize the communication of information in public, 
with the hugely disproportionate punishment of caning and huge fines or jail terms. No actual damage is needed for it to be vandalism. The PAP government changed the law in 1968 because the opposition, unable to hold protests or conduct any other political activity, would sneak out at night and put up signs protesting Singapore's involvement in the Vietnam War. Okay, what if you just stay at home and write on Facebook? Sangeetha Thanapal, who is working on a PhD about race in Singapore, wrote about racism in Singapore on Facebook while criticizing the movie Crazy Rich Asians. She was investigated by the police for, quote, promoting enmity between different groups on grounds of religion or race, unquote, under Section 298A of the Penal Code. The accuracy of her analysis wasn't disputed. Rather, it was that her analysis threatened to disrupt racial harmony in some way. So you can still write the truth. It could still be illegal. What if you just stayed home in your underwear and watched dumb videos on YouTube? You guessed it. The Films Act criminalizes videos with political content. In fact, representatives of the government can enter your house without a warrant merely on suspicion that you've been watching an illegal film. What if you... Okay, but how... Well, surely if... Okay, okay, okay. So what happens if you get invited by the police for an interview? Well, first, under Singapore law, you don't get to have a lawyer present until you're formally charged. We don't have the right to remain silent or the right to an attorney or any of that. Even after you're charged, the police can still question you for a reasonable amount of time before allowing you access to a lawyer. There's no actual definition of what a reasonable amount of time is. The longer so far has been 29 days. In Rajivan Erekavalan versus the public prosecutor, the judge ruled that, quote, the accused has, has no right to be informed of his right to counsel, unquote. So you don't even know when you can have a lawyer. Then say you get questioned for hours and they take a statement. The police officer will type it out. It's not verbatim. They will write it out you know, and, and type out something for you and ask you to sign it. But they don't have to give you a copy of your statement. Now that sounds ridiculous, right? Why would you sign something that you don't have a copy of? <sighs> It can get worse. If the offence is considered severe enough, the police could raid your home and seize all your stuff. What is considered severe enough? Well, here's one example. In Singapore, it's illegal to publish election advertising on cooling off day, the day before polling day in an election. But what is election advertising? Note the bottom paragraph. And such material shall be election advertising even though it can be reasonably regarded as intended to achieve any other purpose as well, and even though it does not expressly mention the name of any political party or candidate. So it's basically anything. So basically, if you post on social media the day before the election, I'm getting really sick of that stamp. Former political detainee Teo So Lang posted a pro-SDP message on Facebook the day before the 2015 election. Someone filed a police report. The police raided her home, took her phone, her laptop, and a whole bunch of stuff. They questioned her for hours and generally made her life really unpleasant for a year and a half. And to what end? She never denied that she posted the message. It was an open and shut case. There was no need for investigation or to seize her stuff. And when people protested this, the official response boiled down to, hey, someone filed a police report. Are you saying that we shouldn't investigate a police report? Are you saying there shouldn't be rule of law? But someone who posted a pro-PAP message on Facebook the same day was just investigated and received a warning. So you see how things work in Singapore and why people live in quiet, resentful fear. We have, as I mentioned in the previous episode, a government which has the power to reach into your life and make things very unpleasant for you on a deeply personal level. And as I've explained today, we have laws which effectively criminalize everything, but which somehow seem only to be used against people who criticize the government. 
We like to think of authoritarianism as jackbooted thugs beating people in the street, but today authoritarianism is far more sophisticated. It uses the language of the rule of law to justify how it oppresses the people. It makes oppression bureaucratic, even boring. It hides itself in obscure legislation and references obscure definitions. By being very arbitrary and complex, it creates an atmosphere of fear and confusion so that we end up self-censoring and self-regulating out of fear. We become like those poor animals who receive electric shocks every time we go near the out-of-bound markers. Eventually, we end up just staying as far away from the out-of-bound markers as possible because we simply don't know when we'll get shocked and our masters don't actually need to do anything more because we're so fearful. And then our masters get to say, hey, we didn't do anything to stop anyone. They chose not to do it. But in this way, public politics in Singapore is severely constrained. It's pretty much banned. But strangely enough, public commercialism is highly encouraged. Public events to sell things, sticking up posters for commercial reasons, films which sell strange, dubious products. That's all okay. And there's a reason for this. Next episode, we'll talk about the constraints around our economy and the PAP's economic quandary. But first, today, in that spirit of commercialism, we'd like to sell you a product. Please enjoy. You're a man of absolute power. You're a man who permits no dissent. You're a man whose father made everything illegal. But you can't prosecute everyone. That would just be ridiculous. You need discretion. Introducing discretion. A cologne for the man who has everything. All the power in the world. All the money in the world. All the daddy issues in the world. No one loves you, but it's okay if everyone fears you. So you use the rule of law to selectively target your critics by calling it discretion. Don't sue your siblings when they accuse you of abuse of power, but sue the man who reported what your siblings said. Discretion. Turn a blind eye to your supporters who post on cooling off day, but raid the home of a 65-year-old woman who supports the opposition. Discretion. Jail a man for walking down the street holding a mirror. I mean, you literally jailed a man for walking down the street without a permit. How stupid is that? Discretion. Discretion. It smells like rule of law, but it stinks like oppression. Only available for Chinese men who are English educated and come from either the civil service or the military. Hello, this is Grouchy the Malayan Sun Bear. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and please share with your friends. Also, please help us make more by becoming a member of New Narrative. It's only 52 US dollars a year or 5 US dollars a month. Imagine how much honey you could buy with that. Learn more about us at newnarrative.com slash hello. Thank you very much.